and the actual phenotypes. This kind of picture shows what you would be doing there. So the left would be the real phenotypes. You see the legend with the disease individual, healthy individual. And then pretend that uh, F, A, and B, using those features and nothing else, um, we clustered all the individuals in two clusters and we assigned them like this. So uh, the RAND index is a measure of similarity between two data clusterings ranging from 0 to 1. So if these two pictures were identical, then the RAND index would be 1. But in this case, the RAND index is 0.52. <coughs> so we would add, once we get up as the first sample, we would add 0.52 to this edge weight, this edge weight, and this edge weight. So then you're going to sample, 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 repeatedly sample to generate an associated map. So then this kind of shows after the sampling is done, you have uh, your edge weights with the different values. And then those edge weights represent the measure of association between our SNP features. So, uh, okay, now, uh, going back to our original goal, the task of finding a group of genetic variants that uh, together accurately predict a trait uh, is now it's a cleat problem. So now we're searching for the subgraph of size x within our, within our complete graph that has the maximum sum of edge weights. So and, uh, I put in the, just the example we've used, I've highlighted it in red. Um, the problem, uh, with the, you know, the issue with the clique problem is that it's NP hard when our number of vertices is not trivially small. So uh, because it's NP hard, we're going to employ evolutionary computation to find the best clique, which represents a group of genetic uh, variants that together will predict the trait of interest. So this is just to get a quick uh, rundown, pseudocode of uh, the evolutionary computation. So generate a population of cliques randomly. <coughs> so that's going to be a population of random permutations from the, in of the integers from one to number of features. And then the first k integers of that permutation identify our clique. So then test the cliques for their sum of edge weights. Um, select cliques to reproduce with quality bias <coughs> tournament selection. We could talk about this after the meeting if you want to go into the details of evolutionary computation, but then pretty much using Darwin's theory of evolution as an algorithm. And produce new variations of selected cliques, replace bad cliques with the new variations, and then until the average quality and the best, like the uh, highest quality of our cliques plateaus for a long period of time, and that's our stopping for two. So uh, my advisor to for proof of concept and the data method, we made up uh, some synthetic data sets of 100 individuals, and each of those 100 individuals have 100 SNP values. So, um, and he kept the answer key. So, set one depends on the state of one SNP. That wasn't anything we were just looking for the one SNP that predicted the trait that was uh, perfectly associated with the trait. So, set two depends on the state of two SNPs. So after generating the associator map, I'm looking for the best clique of two. In other words, the largest edge weight. And then the largest edge weight was between the two SNP features that control the trait. So it was correct according to his answer key. And then set three depends on the state of four SNPs. Um, so I generated the associator map once again, and then mine for the best clique of size four. And it was ended up being correct according to his answer keys. So, uh, Force, that's the four SNPs that control the trait, they were identified by finding the best clique of four. And that was, it worked out, and that was cool because uh, three of those four SNPs individually don't predict the trait of interest or are poorly associated with the trait of interest, but together in that group of four, they make up a group that perfectly predicts the trait of interest. And um, the methods we're employing identify that. Um, where the method broke down was when set four depends on the four pairs of SNPs, so that's different than eight SNPs. Um, and that's where it breaks down, so we're working on that now. And then the future work I've been approved uh, for access for the WTCCC data from Great Britain. Um, so I might apply uh, this method to that to kind of look for the maybe hopefully develop some novel diagnostic panels for, for cliques of genetic variants that can accurately predict a disease trait, and um, hopefully apply for genomic selection data sets uh, for agriculturally. If, I can, if we can modify it so it works with uh, continuous trait data, 
and I usually need to use the G text data, which is um, gene expression, so I can SNP, like a certain group of SNPs, predict uh, gene expression, and then find conditions where the method's most useful and compare it to other methods. Okay, so you guys probably listen to a lot of talks and a lot of people go on about the research, um, and then it's all I've, in my experience, it's easy to as soon as you leave the door, forget what they said. So I wrote a joke that will help you remember my research. <laughs> so um, I'll let you read it. Okay, so not only is this a silly little pun, I can actually do this analysis because the WTCCC data has case control GWAS data sets for irritable bowel syndrome, so not only is it a little joke, I can actually do it. So now that remember what my research is. <laughs> and then these are my acknowledgments. And uh, thank you very much. Hopefully I didn't run over time.